Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's Free CompTIA a certification training course on troubleshooting cooling systems. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to go through the requirements from our CompTIA a 22702 exam, section 1.2. And 1.2 deals with detecting problems and troubleshooting and repairing all kinds of different components. In this video, we're going to focus solely on our cooling systems that are inside of our computers. When we're working with troubleshooting cooling systems, the primary thing that we're looking for is how hot is it getting inside of our computer. And so one of the great things that we can do is start monitoring the temperatures that are inside of our computer systems. Fortunately, there are sensors all over today's modern computers. You've got something called the Advanced Configuration and Power Interface, ACPI. And there may be no ACPI sensors inside of your computer, or there may be many different sensors that can be accessed using this very standard ACPI interface. There are also other devices in your computer like your processors or perhaps your hard drives that have sensors inside of them. Hard drives have something called SMART, Self-Monitoring Analysis and Reporting Technology that report on many, many different things, not just temperature. But for the purposes of our cooling system troubleshooting, we'll focus just what SMART can tell us about how hot that hard drive happens to be getting. This is a free program called PC Wizard that tells us a lot about the different things that are inside of our computer. But one of the selections it has is for voltage, temperature, and fans. And you can see the hardware monitoring, the voltage in our CPU, the ACPI thermal zone. There is some ACPI monitoring going on. How hot is that? Notice our processors have the heat sensors associated with them. We can tell exactly in the thermal diode of the processor what is it seeing as far as the temperature. And here are some of those hard disk monitoring statistics. This particular computer had four different hard drives connected to it, some connecting over a USB connection. So even though it's over USB, I could still see how hot those drives are. Notice that the hard drives that were connected via USB, there are some that are running at 38 and 48 degrees centigrade. Some that were inside of the computer, you can see 42 and 51 degrees. So as your system heats up, as it goes through what you're doing during the day, you can monitor these statistics and get an understanding of, is my cooling system inside of my computer really working the way I would expect. And if you're planning to make a change to your cooling system, maybe you should take a check of what the temperatures are now. You should then make the change and then examine what it is afterwards. It's a great sanity check to know if what you're doing is really making a good uh, change to the cooling systems that are inside of your computer. There's uh, other systems that are available. This is something called the CPU ID hardware monitor. I like this one because it not only tells you what the value is right now, it will tell you from the time that you started this program, what is the minimum value that's been seen and what is the maximum value that's been seen. So you could set this up, let it run, have your computer where it's just turned on. You can start this program and then walk away. Maybe run a burn-in program. Maybe run and see during normal operation how your computer is performing. And at the end of the day, you might come back and say, over the last eight hours, here's been our minimum, here's been our maximum. Now, let's make a change. Let's clean out the fans. Let's add a different kind of fan. Let's change the number of fans that are inside of our computer or where they are, where they are located inside of our computer. And let's run this for another day and see what we get. This is an absolutely free program you can find. Uh, just type in CPU ID hardware monitor in Google. You'll be able to find it right away. Let's do some Q&A now with troubleshooting our cooling systems. Our first question is, which open standard is used for temperature hardware monitoring? does many more things than just temperature hardware monitoring. But the important part here is that it is an open standard, something we can use to access via some very standard interfaces called the Advanced Configuration and Power Interface. You'll almost always see this written as ACPI. Our next question is, what should you check if the overall system temperature is just too high? You've got a computer that's running a little hot. You may want to check the air cooling system because the vast majority of our computers out there are using air to cool everything. Make sure that you've got your fans clean. Make sure that the air is flowing through properly. And now you'll be able to see if the temperatures inside of your computer are starting to decrease. And lastly, what should you check if a processor temperature is too high? Well, processor temperature is coming right off the chip itself. And if that's really heating up, then maybe we should look at the way the heat sink is installed on that chip and make sure that that chip is able to dissipate the heat and the air flowing through the computer is able to move that heat out of the computer system.
That covers what we needed to know for our 227.02 section 1.2, where we've needed to detect problems and troubleshoot and maintain the cooling systems that are inside of our computers. If you'd like to watch any of our absolutely free a videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards and much more, you can visit our website at freeaplus.com.